In this video, I'm going to be looking at the possible connections and our understanding of the links between fibromyalgia and small fiber neuropathy. This was a question that was asked by one of my viewers on an earlier video that I had made about fibromyalgia. And it is true that actually there is a possibility and the data indicates that up to 50% of patients with fibromyalgia may have some form of small fiber neuropathy. But what is small fiber neuropathy? Well, this is a particular form of pain condition which happens when the small fibers, which is essentially, if you think about the nervous system, you have the big nerves that come out from the spinal cord and as the nerves divide and get smaller and smaller, when they finally reach close to the skin, whether that's the hands, the feet, or the rest of the body, at that point, the diameter of these nerves has become really small. And at that point, some of these nerves won't even have the lining, what we call the myelin. Those sheaths are also absent. So you can have some fibers without the myelin, so which are called unmyelinated. And then you have fibers which do still have some of the myelin sheath. Now the myelin sheath is a kind of insulator, but at the same time something that decides how fast a signal goes in a nerve. So you have these small fibers that do get affected for a variety of reasons. Now it may be that it could be a local environment in that area of the skin, it could be a damage, it could be chemotherapy, it could be surgery, it can be some food that you ate but anything in the local environment that changes the nutrition to that particular small fiber or it changes the way the small fiber behaves, that can all cause a change in the signaling of the fiber. The nerve itself may look fine, but there would be a change in the signaling. That change in the nerve signaling can cause it to behave erratically. Sensation may be affected, it can cause pins and needles, tingling, or even it can cause other changes such as pain. And this combination of altered sensation with pins and needles, tingling, pain, and numbness is what together is called a small fiber neuropathy. Now fibromyalgia typically is a condition where you have widespread pain. And there is some research, especially in the animal labs, where they have thought that some of the skin cells, what are called keratinocytes, may actually start to behave like a receptor for noxious or painful stimuli. And that means that when the skin starts to change that way, the skin cells change, then the tiny nerves under them start to get affected or get changed in their signals as well. And that is thought to be one of the mechanisms in which you have the widespread pain that you see in fibromyalgia. It's been difficult to prove this. There's not been too many studies that I'm aware of that has been done in the human sort of body, human trials. There's been a lot of animal studies that have suggested this. There's a lot of active research looking at this but at this time, it's difficult to draw a link between fibromyalgia and small fiber neuropathy and say that in many patients of fibromyalgia, that's the only reason. And even if we think and prove that small fiber neuropathy is happening, and the way to study that is through testing. You'd actually have to do a biopsy to show that this kind of change is happening in the nerves. There are not that many centers in the UK that do those peripheral nerve biopsies. But even if we did prove that there was these changes in the nerves, in the linings, and that's what causing this, our treatments do not change much. We still have the same kind of medication-based treatments, antineuropathics, like gabapentin, pregabalin, carbamazepine, or drugs like amitriptyline or duloxetine but we would still have to go for the non-pharmacological, so the non-drug techniques in terms of all the environmental factors I spoke about, lifestyle measurements, sleep optimization, nutrition strategies, and physical activity. All of those factors will still have to be addressed 
in small fiber neuropathy and that is what will make the best difference out there. So in short, there is possibly a connection but not enough research right now to prove a definitive link and it does not change our practical management of this condition. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching the videos. I hope you're getting value from them. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications on when the next videos are to be released.